Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thanks very much for joining me today. As you can see, I've got um, a, a review here of the, the Blick Studio Artist Color Pencils. But before I get into this review and explain everything about these pencils, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because I've really enjoyed using these pencils, they're predominantly available in America. So for people here in the UK or Europe or Australia or anything like that, um, if, you do, if you're not aware, Blix is a, a franchise store in America. It, it's dotted throughout different uh, states and stuff like that. It's a massive art supply store. Um, I've heard many, many artists talk about Blix. They go to Blix and they get their canvases and their papers and stuff like that. And they do their own brand of uh, colored pencils as well. And, and this is them. Um, I've always wanted to try these pencils out because unfortunately for us here in the UK, we can't just go on to Amazon and get them or um, eBay because uh, not unless somebody's selling them secondhand. But they're just not sold like that here. You can go on to Blix website, have a little look, and uh, they will ship certain items outside of the States. But I'm not 100% sure whether they ship um, their pencils out. And even if they did, by the time you've paid for the pencils in the UK and uh, you've paid for shipping, when the package arrives here in the UK, we then have to pay for customs again. And depending on the weight and the size and all the rest of it, that can be very, very expensive. It can, it can end up costing you quite a considerable amount of money. Um, <clears throat> but it'd be definitely worth, uh, if, if you really wanted to try these pencils or after this review, you really want to try them, it's definitely, it'd be definitely a good idea to email Blix and find her um, whether they would be able to, uh, whether they're willing to ship them over to you, obviously at whatever cost that it's going to be to them. So it is a little bit downheartening that this, uh, for the most part, this review will be better for people living in uh, America. But like I said, you know, I'm obviously a UK citizen. I wanted these for a long time and lo and behold, I've, I've ended up getting a, a settling. So, one other thing as well before we go on any further. A lot of people say that these pencils are made by Koh-i-Noor. Now, I'm not sure whether that, how much truth is in that. But regardless, I have tested and reviewed these pencils as standalone pencils. I haven't taken any of that into consideration. Um, there's certain telltale t signs um, throughout the review that some of you that have used Koh-i-Noor products or... or um, no coin or company and know the type of products that they sell you might think to yourself all right i, I can see why people think that but um i just wanted i just wanted to put that out there that i have just tested and reviewed these as a standalone product i haven't taken any of that in, into consideration so as you can see here um i have the 72 set um the sets that are available uh, let me just turn this over because it's actually written on the back here so you can get um sets in 12 24 36 48 and 72 um, and they also the pencils come also open stock but although this is a 72 set there are actually 91 colors because um the black studio sets as with the coin oil and this is where people are going to start kind of like putting two and two together as with the coin oil they also come in sets of uh landscape uh portrait um uh, they, they also have uh, a gray set and a brown set as well so that's where the 91 uh colors comes from because they do have sets i think the the the, the set uh the landscape and portrait set are two 24 sets uh sorry 24 sets respectively uh but i will have all that information over on the written review so if you go across there, you'll be able to see the breakdown of uh, the different sets that are available in this Blix Studio range. But for now, the 72 set is the um, the, the biggest set. So as you can see here, um, when you open the set up, uh, you've got these little tabs here that you can lift up. You've got this uh, little plastic uh, tray, which with the vast majority of colored pencils, they're always flimsy, so you've got to just be careful lifting them out because at the end of the day, they're not really 
they're not really there to protect the pencils. They're there just to keep the pencils in place. The tin is there to protect the pencils. So uh, that's the first tier. So the first tier's got the yellows and the reds, the purples and blues. So let me move that to the side. And then down here at the bottom, uh, you've got more, a couple more blues, some greens, browns, and then your the, the greys. And it's got a, a really nice selection of greys. Now, there, there's also um, two metallic pencils here in this, which I'm not normally uh, a big fan of metallic pencils in general, but I have come across a couple of sets where the metallic pencils have been really nice. I'm going to show you how these work. Uh, on black paper later on in this review so just let me put that back and we'll take a look at the the pencil so just let me lift the pencil out okay so first of all it's a really nice pencil to hold in hand it's it's uh one of the more chunkier pencils which i personally prefer uh it's a round barrel it's i measured it at um the, well the core is 3.8 millimeters and the barrel i measured at 8.2 millimeters so you, it, it's really a, a, a good, but having said that, although the dimensions are quite big, it's still a very light pencil, um, if that makes sense. Uh, the, the end of it here is just uh, the, the, the actual core exposed, which I'm not too sure whether that would affect the pencil or not, because a lot of manufacturers cap their, their ends now, but so far it hasn't done. When I've been sharpening these pencils, they sharpen like a dream. Absolutely perfect. No problem whatsoever. Um, as you can see along the um, the barrel here, we have the, the pigment name. Um, and it's written twice. So we have the pigment name here, then Blick Studio, and then uh, the pigment name again. You have the, the pigment names here, but they're both English. So it's just, I don't know, the reason why that they've done... Uh, the, the need to put the, the pigment name on the barrel twice. Perhaps maybe it's because obviously when you're sharpening and stuff like that, um, it's best to have two on there. I don't know. But nevertheless, there is. Then we've got the Blick Studio name. Uh, then when you turn it over, there's a barcode here, obviously for um, purchasing the pencil in open stock form. And then obviously where the pencils are manufactured, which is the Czech Republic. Again, going back to the Koinor thing. Um, so th that's the, the dimensions and the characteristics of the pencil. What I will say is whenever I first started using these pencils, f right off the bat, for some reason, I thought that they were oil based, but they're actually wax. But if you were to give these pencils to somebody and, and ask them to, to guess or to, to, you know, use them, test them, and then find out whether they think they're oil or, or wax. I think they would struggle a little bit and the reason why is because normally with a wax based pencil um, the point wears down very very quickly that's has that's not the case with these um, so th although they are waxed but they're they're kind of like a harder wax uh, it, they, they they perform a point they keep a point much like an oil based pencil would do but they lay down like a, a wax based pencil so i don't know whether there's kind of like a mixture of oil and wax in there i'm not too sure uh but it's a great combination either way i've heard a lot of people refer to these as kind of like a, a prismacolor type pencil in in that the, the the wax is really really super soft i didn't get that at, from my testing it is really soft but it's not like prismacolor soft or anything like that so I'm just going to move this over to the side and uh, I'll get the, the test that I've done as I always do. Okay, so as you can see here, as I always do, I've done uh, the top layer is one light layer. The middle layer is five light layers. I always do five layers because I think to myself, uh, w once you lay down five layers of pigment or anything like that, for those of us that use uh, odorless mineral spirits, after about five or six layers, that's the time when you want to start using the odorless mineral spirits. So I always use five layers. Uh, and then just one heavy application. Now, you will be able to see, I'm just going to zoom in here, you will be able to see um, you can see a little bit of a waxy residue on the heavy application. 
which is you would expect to see that um, with a wax based pencil. It's not too bad. It's not like real. I didn't get any real bad bloom or anything like that. Nor did I get a lot of crumbling. It I got a little bit of crumbling, but not much. Um, certainly not anything to complain about. I'm just going to move this camera so you can see that top layer as well. There we go. Sorry about that. So. You can see there. That with the light layer. Um, it lays down very, very smooth. The five layers that I've managed to get on top of each other. I, you can see there as well that there's no bloom or anything like that. And then with the heavy application, there's a little bit of bloom, but not much to talk about. Um, I've done a little bit of blend in here with the reds that are available in there. I would say um, the only criticism I have with this set, and it's more to do with the set, less the actual pencil, is that there's not an awful lot of pinks in it. Um, so if you're the type of artist that likes loads of pinks, that I there's a lot of purples and violets and stuff like that, but not like light pinks. Um, but you can see here that the the gradient, the blending and stuff like that that I was able to get here, they blend very well together. Um, also, with these, these are two dry blending um, tests. So I've done the, the red and yellow there, which is give, giving us a, a nice orange, and then the blue and yellow here giving us a nice green. And then I've done a, a little swatch here of yellow and green. Sorry, yellow and blue. Uh, and you can see already that it's given us a, a green. But I'm going to use some odorless middle spirits. Now the paper that I'm using this uh, for this test is uh, Bristol Strathmore Vellum uh, 300 series. So you can see there that the pigment reacts really, really well to odorless mineral spirits, which it does for the most part on um, with wax-based pencils. Uh, one of the other things that I missed, I, I forgot to say to you, but I'm sure it was pretty evident. With the, the actual pencils, I'm just going to move the pencils back in here. Um, the indication of the pigment is the actual barrel. So the barrels are lacquered the same color as the actual pigment. Now, I've done lots of testing with these pencils, and for the most part, the vast majority of these pencils, um, the, the pigment of the pencil is very, very close to the actual pigment on the, the, the barrels. So that's really good, because whenever you're looking for a pencil or a color to use or whatever, um, you can go straight for it and just get it. Um, with regards to light fast, now I find it a little bit difficult uh, to track down the light fast ratings, but I, I was able to get, get there in the end, and so with the light fast ratings, it's done. Uh, I've done it with the the full ninety one pencils. So I took the chart uh, and I counted. Um, with I, I I included all the ninety one pencils. So with one star being the least light fast. Uh, it goes all the way up to uh, five stars, I think it is. So one, they they have out of the ninety one range, they have ten one star pencils, uh, fifteen two star pencils, twenty seven three star pencils, thirty nine four star pencils, um, and and that's it. So you can see there that they're they're not the most light fast pencil, but I've had this debate with a lot of people where they say, you know, if the pencils aren't sold open stock and they're not light fast, what's the point in you doing a review of them because we're not going to use them? Well, the point is that there are a lot of people out there who um, have real high quality light fast pencils and uh, open stock pencils and stuff like that if they're doing commissions. But when they're not doing commissions and they're just doing practice and then stuff like that, they may not want to use those pencils for that particular thing. So using some other type of pencils 
are the scrape pencils nonetheless, but maybe not as high light fast ratings or whatever. Um, it's important that I review all the pencils that are available out there and then you guys can make the dis your informed decision as to whether you want to get them or not. The light fast rating on all of these pencils are... Now, I'm not 100% sure what test what uh, has been used here because with the blue wool light fast test, it's uh, 1 to 8. And then with the um, the vast majority of the light fast test of the uh, ASTM D6... What is it? D6901. Uh, it's a one to three light one to three stars used in that test, so I'm not 100 percent sure which one it was, but nonetheless, four star is the the most light fast. One star is the least light least light fast, um, and there's like 39 of the pencils in the 91 range are four star, 27 are three star, 15 are two star, and 10 are one star. Like I said, I have all that information also over in the Art Gear Guide, so if that has been a little bit confusing for you. Go across and it will be written down. You can get to see it um, as it is. As always, I'm, I'm going to do some testing here on black paper so you can get a, a feel for how opaque or, or not, as the case may be. Okay, so I've got a, um, a few pencils together from the um, Big Studio range. And I've got the, the, um, the metallic pencils. So I'm going to do those first. So this is the uh, silver. Now, I'm doing a, a relatively heavy application on this because it's from black paper. I'm not going to start layering or anything like that. It's just to see how opaque or, or um, what the opacity levels are like on these. But as you can see there, with these two um, metallic type pencils, they are actually really, really nice. The gold and silver there, they, they actually look like metallic. I've tried a lot of metallic pencils in the past and they just don't look metallic. They just look like ochre and grey. Um, so I have the, the Blick Studio um, white pencil here. So you can see there that it's a little bit, I'll zoom in on these in a second, but you can, from where I'm standing, um, it's not completely opaque, uh, certainly not like the, the silver or the gold. Okay, so this is a, an apple green. Uh, this one here is a cherry red. Oh, broke that. Sorry, too much pressure on there. Uh, this one here is a dark yellow. And uh, this one is a sky blue. Okay, so... As you can see there, I'm trying to make sure that there's no glare or anything like that coming off here. You can see there that the the silver and the gold, the first two ones there, they are really nice metallic colors. I don't think actually they're showing up in the camera as well as they are in kind of like, you know, real life here. But you're just going to have to trust me on this, that they do look like metallic colors, which is, uh, like I said, it's really hard to find. And one of the reasons why I don't like a lot of metallic colors uh, in color pencils. The white here is really nice. It's not as opaque as some uh, white pencils, but it is nice. It's still, you know, you, you can definitely tell it's a white pencil. Uh, the apple green here is it's a little bit, there's a little bit of opacity to that. Same with the, um, the cherry red and the dark yellow. But then you, when you look at the sky blue, it's really, really bright, vibrant, opaque. Um, but the colors themselves on white paper, uh, on the Bristol vellum paper that I used there, they were very rich, vibrant colors the whole way through the range. Um, I really enjoyed using these. I was really, like I said at the beginning of this video, I was really excited to get my hands on this set and uh, try them out. 
And I'm so glad that I did because I really, really like them. Um, they are a lovely pencil to use. I haven't been able to get a, a, a artwork finished for this video, but hopefully by the time I've actually edited the video and got it up, um, I'll have it added in. But I, I do have a little bit of artwork um, using these pencils, and I really enjoy. Like I say, I really enjoyed using them. Anyway, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching this review. Don't forget, if you want, I have loads more information over in the Art Gear Guide. You know, like prices and stuff like that. The, the prices over in the Art Gear Guide, unfortunately, are just US prices, obviously, because of the fact that Blix is just a US-based uh, art store. But nevertheless, they're over there if you want them. Same with the light fast rate ratings on the pencils. There's a little bit more detail over there on the Art Gear Guide. So go across there and read that if you want. Um, don't forget you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well. The links for that will all be down below. And uh, thanks very much, guys. I look forward to seeing you again in the next review. Bye. <laughs>